Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Does hyperthreading matter when you have eight real processing cores? We have the Intel 9th generation and the Intel 10th generation i7 CPUs here, the i7-9700K and the i7-10700K. Both are eight cores. Both will be running in today's benchmarks at five gigahertz fixed clock speed. So there's no clock speed difference here. But the i7-10700K has hyper-threading, so 16 threads. In just a minute, we're going to go full screen. I'm going to show you the actual footage of the game pay being played. We have some built-in benchmarks, and we have some live gameplay for you to take a look at. I'll be voicing that over in just a minute. MSI Afterburner provides the real-time performance numbers you'll see in the upper left-hand corner of each screen. So you can see the CPU usage and all the other stats as they play. And then we'll have charts later in the video. Now, this right here is the Stormtrooper build. This is actually the machine that we tested the i7-9700K with. You can see it has a uh, dark, well, it has a Noctua NHD15 at the moment. It had a Dark Rock Pro 4 in it when these tests were done. Basically the same cooler in terms of overall cooling performance. And the temperature numbers you'll see were done with the Dark Rock Pro 4, not the Noctua NHD15 now. The i7-10700K is on my test bench and it has a 360 millimeter liquid cooler, which is a little bit of an upgrade, but frankly, for the i7 level of CPUs, any of these will be just fine. The i9 needs the 360 millimeter liquid cooler, but the Dark Rock Pro 4 and HD15 would be fine on the i5 or the i7. You can see the motherboards here, both very premium, nice gigabyte models, Z390, Z490. In fact, uh, this Aorus Pro Wi-Fi is exactly what is installed in here, and I've done testing on the i7 and i9 with this Gigabyte Aorus Z490 right here. RAM speeds are a little bit different, and I'm sure this might be a point of contention for some of you, but Intel cares about RAM speeds a little bit less than Ryzen does, so it is what it is. This particular machine was built with 32 gigabytes of DDR4-3200 CL16. My i9, i7, 10th generation test bench has 32 gigabytes of DDR4-4000 CL19. The cast latency, lower is better, whereas with the speed, higher is better. CL19 is slower than CL16, but 4000 is higher than 3200. So a higher cast latency because CL16 is virtually impossible to do at 4000. It's a very tight timing. It does mean that the RAM is not exactly the same, but it's real, real close. And at most, you're looking at maybe one frame per second difference based upon variances of RAM speeds, especially on Intel. It just isn't as sensitive as Ryzen is. And I could have gone and redone the test with more RAM, but I thought that was close enough. In my experience of RAM testing, I did a big RAM test video a couple of years ago on that, so it's, it's not a huge difference. Linked in the video description below will be the full build video list on this particular machine if you're interested in seeing it, which of course was originally built with an i7-9700KF. And there's talk there about the parts used and you can actually see an overhead build video if you're interested. Links to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay for all the parts you see on the screen. If you found this video helpful, informative, useful, and you wanna support the channel, using those links when you shop, whether you buy these or anything else is definitely helpful and appreciated. With that being said, we're gonna jump straight to the benchmarks. We'll have some charts and I'll have a few closing thoughts at the end of this video. Enjoy. First up, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Left-hand side of the screen, 9700KF. Right-hand side of the screen, 10700K. The 9700KF is using twice the CPU usage. Look at the first number on line three. It's twice as high as the first number on line three on the 10700, because on the 10700 with 16 threads, each fully utilized thread is 6.25% of the CPU. On the 9700KF, each fully utilized thread is 12.5% because there's only eight threads. What this means is that neither CPU is really being maxed out, but the 10700K has far more reserve power. If all you do with your computer is play on one monitor, one game with nothing going on, then sure, the 9700KF is fine. Do you multitask? Do you have Discord running in the background? Are you watching a YouTube video or Twitch streaming? That's where it's gonna make a difference. 
The challenge is simulating that. Notice that we have basically the same scores across the board here because this is a clean test bench. Well, actually, these are both clean test benches and nothing else is being run. And so you're not going to see a difference, but you can see the CPU usage difference. And so you can see the fact that the 9700KF does fine, but it just doesn't have that much left to give if you do anything else with it. Moving right along, we have Battlefield 5, this time with live gameplay. However, it is the same map doing the same sort of stuff in the same area. I tried to make it as comparable as possible. Now, when you look at the chart for this one, you may come to a similar conclusion of the last one. Well, hey, it played the one plays it just fine. You clearly don't need hyper-threading. Well, you do and you don't. Again, take a look at the CPU usage. Now, of course, you cannot compare it frame to frame here the way you can on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is a built-in benchmark, and thus it's consistent. But if you watch this over time, and yes, I did play full 20 to 30 minute battles on each machine, the usage is substantially lower on the 10700K. Not because the game uses less, but because the CPU has more to give. It's a little bit faster on the average and a little bit faster on the 1% low, but where it's really going to stand out is in multitasking if anything else is going on your computer besides just running the game. Moving along to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, this game will run on a potato. For all of my speech about whether or not you need hyper-threading or 16 threads, no, for this game you most absolutely certainly do not, and it's reflected in the numbers. Yes, the 10700 was slightly faster here and slightly slower there, but... This is just the fact that this is live gameplay as opposed to built-in benchmarks. This game doesn't remotely care. Now we've got a whole bunch more benchmarks to show you here. And rather than just read every single number to you on the screen, now that you've got an idea of look at the third line, look at the CPU usage, you'll see a chart here in just a second. I wanna to talk to you about the differences between this set of tests and the recent ones that I did comparing four core, four thread, and four core, eight thread CPUs. Now in that comparison, there was a much larger difference in terms of overall performance because four core, four thread is quite limited here in 2020 compared to four cores and eight threads. With eight core, eight thread versus eight core, 16 thread, there's far less of an issue, especially if you're not multitasking. If you're not trying to play your game while you're doing a bunch of other stuff, the truth of the matter is I've ragged on the 9700K in the past. I've said, oh, this is ridiculous. We went from four cores, eight thread i7s to eight core, eight thread. We didn't add any more threads. Yes, we added some execution units. It's nice, but we didn't really make a great leap forward. Now we have with the i7 10700K, which is pretty nice. We've gained hyper threading. So we've gone to 16 threads. The truth of the matter is, hyper-threading does not make your game substantially faster. Hyper-threading potentially makes your game smoother. It can add between 10 to 20% performance in certain circumstances, but it's much more about the ability to multitask, the ability to have a lot of stuff going on. Maybe you have Discord running in the background because you're using audio and you're talking to teammates. Maybe you're watching a YouTube video, one of mine, you're watching a Twitch stream. Perhaps you're recording or live streaming your game. Uh, perhaps you've got a bunch of background tasks. You've got an online backup running or a file sync. Maybe you've got two or three monitors and you have a variety of things you're doing in addition to playing the game. That's where the extra threads are really going to shine. What it really does is it gives the CPU the ability to use more of itself at all times. You've got one physical processor core and then two logical virtual cores. The main function of hyperthreading is to increase the number of independent instructions in the pipeline. It allows the prefetch buffers to pull data from RAM. It allows instruction caches to operate. It can look up what you're going to do next. And it can have that sort of running through the pipeline because modern CPUs have more than 10 stages in the pipeline. And so they have a lot of different things going on. It's not just one part of the chip doing math at one time. It's a prefetch buffer pulling data from RAM or from the L3 cache on the CPU. It's the instruction cache getting maybe uh, fetching an instruction to run on the next thing in the process. And because modern CPUs are both super scalar and they have branch prediction, they do speculative execution. They'll actually guess at what the outcome of another thread or another process is going to be, and they will 
do math based on what the CPU thinks is going to happen. If it gets a hit, you get a performance improvement. If it gets a miss, it just throws that work out and then does it with the correct information. Now, that technology has been around for a long, long time since the 90s when the Pentium and whatnot first came out. But with hyperthreading, it allows multiple features of each core to be in operation simultaneously in a way that non-hyperthreaded chips don't. It is not doubling of processing power, but it's more effective utilization of the resources that you already have. The truth of the matter is no CPUs should not be hyperthreaded today. In fact, quad threading is a thing. And we may very well see from AMD in the next couple of years quad thread chips where you, for example, you would have an eight core 32 thread processor as opposed to an eight core 16 thread processor. And that's designed to keep deep pipelines busy when the CPU keeps getting faster and main system RAM while it's growing in performance. It's not growing in performance nearly as much as the CPU is. And that allows more pipelines and more prefetch work and more speculative execution to happen on more virtual cores even though you don't actually have more real cores. Coming back to the benchmarks, you can see Shadow of the Tomb Raider right here, almost evenly split, 55 to 60% on the 9700KF and 30 to 40% on the 10700K. But the benchmark chart doesn't reflect that utilization difference. You can see here, they're very, very close to each other, slight differences, but all things considered, they're very, very similar. And they will be for most current generation games unless you're multitasking. Now, if you're building a computer today that you want to last for three to five years, that's a key point that you might want to consider because games are going to start using more cores and threads. The new PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X have eight core 16 thread Zen 2 processors. They're basically Ryzen 7 3700Xs. And so that's going to sort of be the standard to which games, at least console games that get PC ports, get developed for. And then of course, PCs having Windows overhead and uh, other programs running in your task tray and multitasking and multiple monitors, etc., will certainly require more. If you want something for the next three to five years from today, well, actually, maybe you want to take a look at a 10 or 12 core processor if you want to have more longevity in front of you. But an eight core 16 thread chip should certainly last you for a while. However, if you have an i7-9700, 9700K, 9700K off, you don't have to throw it out tomorrow. It's not obsolete. It's not terrible. It's not useless. It does, however, have a limited life in front of it, relatively speaking. You do have an 8-thread CPU. i7-2600Ks were 8-thread CPUs. Now you have 8 real cores versus 4 cores and 4 virtual threads, but you still, in fact, only have an 8-thread CPU, so your future is limited. You will have to upgrade sooner than somebody who has an 8-core 16-thread chip. Depending upon what you play, and see, this is where it kind of gets into the weeds, because if you play uh, World of Tanks, World of Warships, League of Legends, Grand Theft Auto V, Overwatch, Fortnite, Dota 2, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Rainbow Six Siege, then it really doesn't matter. In fact, here's World of Warships right here. Look at the CPU usage. Trivial. Absolutely trivial. You can play World of Warships on a four-core chip without any problem whatsoever. Four cores, eight threads is nice, but you can play this game for years and years and years on a 9700KF without any issues whatsoever. Yes, the performance is different here, but again, it's live gameplay, so it's fine. Trust me, I've played this game on tons of computers. Welcome back. Thank you all for watching all of that footage. Two gold stars for all of you who watched to this point in the video. It's greatly appreciated. I have to give Intel credit. They did listen to the market. They are responding to AMD. They added hyper-threading to their entire line of 10th generation CPUs, except for the Celeron, which none of you care about. So the Pentium Gold, the i3, the i5, the i7, and the i9 all have hyper-threading, which makes the entire line worth considering. Now the i7-10700K does cost more than a Ryzen 7 3700X, 
but it is faster. I will have an upcoming video comparing those, but if maximum frame rates, if 144 hertz monitor or perhaps 244 hertz monitor gaming is your thing, Intel is definitely worth considering. If you play it on a 60 hertz monitor or maybe even a 100 hertz monitor, it really doesn't matter. Intel and Ryzen are both very competitive, but for high frame rate gaming, Intel really is still king. And the price has come down because this is now about $100 less expensive than the previous generation eight core 16 thread chip was. And price competition and comp competition between Intel and AMD in general is a good thing. So we're all the winner when they compete. As I mentioned before, links in the video description below to everything I mentioned, Amazon, Newegg, and eBay. Links to the full playlist on this build video if you're interested in taking a look at the assembly process and my previous thoughts on that, which basically all you have to do is replace the Z390 with the Z490 motherboard and change the 9th gen to the 10th gen, and otherwise it's exactly the same build. Pick your cooler of choice. And this thing actually runs really cool and quiet, and uh, it's, it's a nice machine. I'm very happy with it. This is actually going to be my new gaming PC at home with an i9-9900K installed in it, swapped out from this 8-core 16 threads. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to the channel with a big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, you know where the comment section is. I can't respond to everybody, but I do read them and I greatly appreciate it. Video description is down there as well. If you like this content and you want to directly support the channel, please consider hitting the join button down there. There's a support option for just $2 a month. It provides you with a loyalty badge in the comment section and live stream chat. It gives you access to our custom tech deal emoji and the private chat channels over on the tech deals discord linked at the bottom of the video description. Come on by and say hello. It's greatly appreciated. A couple more options uh, to support as well with some exclusive behind the scenes videos and more. Hit that join button for more details. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.